This next stock is a request from our community, our very active community, thousands of members talk about our investments. This is the stock they wanna hear about. We did it on a live stream. I said, this looks interesting. The stock is DaVita. They do dialysis, in-home dialysis, or in-home, or is it at? Um, I'm not sure if they do in-home. They definitely have facilities. Sorry, so it's yep. facilities, et cetera. Definitely so facilities. let's pull up DaVita and take a look at the stock. Okay, guys, it's up 2.5% today on a down day in the market. That's interesting. Year to date, it's basically even. Five years, it's only up at 12%. Wow. Okay, it's a $7 billion company. Now, Mo, first thing I notice is, seems to be a lot of debt. Yeah. $7 billion market cap, guys. This means that if you bought every share outstanding, you'd pay $7 billion. The enterprise value is $21 billion. The difference here is essentially your debt. Okay. Now, one thing I do like about DeVita, Mo, net income in the last year was $467 million. Five-year net income was 626 But look at their free cash flow. Significantly higher. Significantly higher. $1.36 billion in free cash flow, $1.17 billion average last five years. I just saw some quote the other day by Joel Greenblatt. He goes, listen, all I care about is free cash flow. Mm. He's like, I don't even worry about any. It's free wow. cash flow all the way. And it makes sense because free cash flow is what you're going to use to buy back shares, pay dividends, um, reinvest in yourself, right. make acquisitions, or pay down debt. Pay down debt. Yeah. So it's essentially what you can give to the shareholders, right? right? So I kind of like that. So from a free cash flow perspective, it's selling for five times free cash flow, Mo. Five times free cash flow. I see that smirk on your face. I like it. I like it too. <laughs> five times free cash flow. All right. It's a good start. Good start. Now, profit margin. Okay, profit margin's down. But remember, the free cash flows up over its five-year average. So this might be temporary. 30% gross margin. Okay, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Does it tell you how many facilities they have? 3,000 facilities worldwide. And they treat 240,000 patients globally per year. Wow. Wow. That's incredible, Mo. Yeah. Let's look at their sales. Japita receives about two-thirds of U.S. sales at government uh, Medicare reimbursement rates. Okay, we're seeing a flat line of sales here, Mo. 2017, the, the year ending June of 2017, they did $11.76 billion. Last, last 12 months, they did 11.74. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. That'd be something I'd want to look into more with our community because yeah. that's a pretty interesting thing. Let's see how their profit did in those times. Okay, so remember the profit is... Oh boy, 1.3. Look at these. Oh man, it's all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. Okay, that's interesting. So let's go to the cash flow statement because we talked about how much we like cash flow. Holy buybacks. Yeah, they're buying back a lot of. Okay, so something I. So again, here, look at their cash from operations. This is the cash they get from the business operations before capital expenditures. 2 billion, 2 billion, 1.8, 1.6, 2.3, 1.8, 1.62. So they're basically flat in the last seven or eight years. Now, this could explain why they're selling for such a low multiple. Mm -hmm. It's boring. It's not growing a ton. It's true. So a lot of people are like, F this. That happens very often in investing. But remember, it's selling for five times free cash flow. That's a huge, huge potential. That means basically every five years, you get back your entire investment potentially. So think about it this way. If I bought the entire company <laughs> and I paid six, $7 billion for it for the entire all the shares, and it, and it spit out to me $1.3 billion a year in free cash flow, 1.4. After five years, I get my money back. Mm -hmm. It's a 20% return. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Now, their capital expenditure is not very high. They're decreasing. I don't understand why that is. They went from 800. Is it the facilities? They're yeah. building less facilities? I'm, I'm going to look that up right now. Okay. But the free cash flow is, I mean, it's, it's the same. I mean, it's not much growth. That's interesting to me. Is it because... Of Medi government cutbacks? Could be. I mean, if they're taking two-thirds from Medicare, yeah. it could be a lot based on that. All right, guys. So this is the eight pillars. I remember, a lot of check marks here. Don't ever make a decision just on the eight pillars. The eight pillars are there to tell a story. We have one X here, and it's kind of a big one. Long-term liability is divided by five-year free cash flow. Essentially, their debt is 10 times their five-year free cash flow. That's high. That's really high. Now... A lot of it is these centers, these facilities. That could be a lot of leases. I don't know if they own them. 
There's things like that in there. And these are the extra nuggets that we're trying to just peel back layers on. But we're not going to get to the nitty gritty, especially for a $7 billion company. There's going to be more we're going to want to uncover. So let's keep going. Um, like I said, I do love the six times free cash flow and 11 times earnings. I love the fact that the free cash flow is lower. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Cash flow growth was higher than net income growth. Return on invested capital, five years is 11%, 10.6%. So it's a little bit better than the market does over long periods of time. So guys, there's a lot of positives here. The only, oh, by the way, look at these share buybacks. Guys, they bought back 47% of their shares. It's crazy. So even though the profit, is cash flow is essentially the same, they bought back half their shares, which gives the investors double the, the access to the free cash flow, right? So if a company has 10 shares outstanding and you own one, you own 10% of the business. If they buy back five shares, you now you still own one share, but now it's split amongst five shares. You now own 20% of the business. That's how a company with very stagnant or very little growth can reward their investors if they're selling for a cheap price. Man, that's pretty cheap. That's pretty cheap. Six times free cash flow. It's interesting, Mo. Now, guys, the reason I love our community is... I go to the community and people in the community go for investment ideas and to talk through their investments. So what we have here is our community, bull and bear cases. We ask for every video, guys, what are your bull and bear cases for this company? So Mo, why don't you pull it up here and see what uh, our community members are saying. So here's Rich, a, a couple of bull cases, large share buybacks. Huge share buybacks. Yep. A company with good ROIC that chooses to buy back shares rather than provide a dividend. He likes that. The stock dropped because of the Ozempic trial. Um, status implies overcorrection in the market. There's a lot of stories out there right now about Ozempic just because they're in the kidney world. Um, Berkshire Hathaway owns 39, has a 39.5% ownership. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. I did not know that either. Let's Look, Google that and make yeah, sure that's check true. That, please. Guys, according to Stock Circle, this is accurate. Wow. They own 36.1 million shares, 2.7 billion in value. They started buying back in 2011. So let's see where the stock was in 2011 when they were buying it. Oh, look at them. Good for them. 28 bucks a share was the low. Good for them. All right. So their basis is probably, if I were to guess, 50 to 60 bucks a share. Hmm. So they're up a little bit. Yeah. Interesting. Here's a couple of bear cases from Rich. High debt, but the company does lease substantially all of its U.S. dialysis facilities that are non-cancelable for 5 to 15 year lengths. I did look that up in the 10K, and that is correct. Um, for the most part, now, they're a one-trick pony. It's kidney treatment. But there's something to be said for being an expert in your field, and you do it really oh, well. Oh, 100%. You know? you know, it's funny. I hear the Ozempic stuff, and I hear like, oh, it's the, the Ozempic's helping for kidney and all that stuff. Guys, we've been around long enough to know that I don't, it's very hard to cure diseases. Very, very difficult to cure diseases. I, maybe, maybe this is part of it, but. Maybe. Something that I talk to a lot of doctors about, I mean, especially with our fathers being in cancer, I say, is it, is it really a cure? And they always say, the, the big problem is you fix something and when you fix it, you mess something else up. And it just is that well, vicious what, cycle. Yeah, let me you go to extreme. better, of course. But. What about making artificial kidneys at some point? Like you're talking about hearts I, being I know, made. I know the Cleveland Clinic's doing a lot with 3D printing of organs right now. Well, that's maybe that's why the business is stagnant. But guess what, guys? That's why six times free cash flow. It is so stinking cheap. Yeah. What's its re what's its all time high, Mo? The all time high. 136 bucks yep. just in August. August of 2021. So it's down almost in half, about 40%. So our um, CEO just told us, guys, let's take a look at their biggest competitor. And their biggest competitor is Fresenius Medical Care. Look at this, guys. Very similar price to free cash flows. Look at that. Six times, five and a half times. These guys pay a dividend, though, 4.1%. What's their debt? What's big. It's so big? $10 billion okay. market cap to, to $30 billion see, enterprise I value. I like seeing that because yeah. it's like, okay, it's an industry-wide thing. It's not specific to DeVita. So DeVita has 3,000 um, facilities. These guys have 4,100. DeVita manages 240,000 patients a year. These guys have 345,000 patients a year. So they pay a dividend. DeVita does not. Very similar margins. DeVita's got a higher gross margin in the last year than than Fresenius, and their free cash flow is also significantly higher than their net income. 
A very bad return on invested capital, though. Only 5% mm. versus DeVita's 10.6. Let's see their eight pillars. Oof. They've only bought back 4% of their shares. Guys, for me, I, 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 off, the, off the 500 foot view, I like DeVita more. Like if you're making the comparison. Yeah. yeah. Bought back more shares, not paying a dividend, um, has a higher gross margin. Um, yeah, I like DeVita a little bit more. Now let's go see what the analyst estimates say for DeVita. Okay, they have, they're expecting $7.29 earnings per share this year, going to 10 bucks in the next four years. All right, what about revenue? 12 billion to 13.45, very little. Yeah, very little. Very little. But it's consistent with what they've done the last decade. That is true. Yeah. All right, so guys, you might be surprised what we find here, but now we're going to do a stock analyzer. We need to figure out what's the right price to pay. Now remember, when we do this, it doesn't mean go buy the company. It means, hey, should I take a deeper look? A lot of people out there will say, oh, love the company and then go in. No, we want to do the analysis. We want to do a 500 foot view, run it in stock analyzer. If it's close, we do more digging. So in our stock analyzer tool, that's what we're going to do. Now, guys, we've talked a lot about the community here, talked a lot about our tools. We haven't even touched on all the tools we have in our software, but guys, I want you guys to sit here and take this, this software, this community and the software for a test drive, but I don't want you to make a yes or no decision right now. What I want you to do is to make an informed decision. And you cannot make an informed decision from the outside. I really absolutely need you on the inside. Just like when you're buying a car, you want that 15 minute test drive to get inside the car, feel it, get on the road, go use the car. Same thing here. But instead of 15 minutes, guys, we are giving you a seven day full access free test drive of our community and our software. Go in there, engage with the thousands of people. Our interactions are up 80% in the last month because of all the activity. It is a wonderful community. Go to everythingmoney.com. If you love it, you'll be able to sign up. And if you don't keep learning from us, I know eventually you'll come back and say, you know what? This is the right way for me to change the way in which I view money. So everythingmoney.com, free seven day full access trial. Mo, when was the last time you looked at DeVita? So I've never done it. Never. Never. So I'm going to run it here. I did it October 31st, 2022. Okay. Okay. So guys, I did a 10-year analysis. Mo, what, are your, what would you give your low, middle, and high assumptions for revenue growth is our first line here. I did zero, one, and two. I did zero, two, and four. Okay. Okay. Profit margin. I did three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half. I went five, five and a half, and six because the 10 year and five year average was five and a half. So I'm fine staying there. The only thing that got me was like the, that Medicare thing. So I was like, okay, so I, I don't want them to mess with profit margins in any way. So that's why I brought it, brought it down to three and a half and started there. You, you think Medicare is going to go ahead and F these guys? It's very possible. Really? I don't like the government. Yeah, but the government ain't going away. It's true, but they can not pay you. Okay. <laughs> When is they might go to the? I mean, the, the way the things are going, they're going to want to go to bigger so hospitals, bigger institutions. So you can go to two hundred forty thousand patients at Davida and say, "Yeah, you're out." Or they might say, "Hey, you're going to go to a Cleveland clinic, or you're going to go to a Mayo clinic, and you're not going to go here." Oh, I get it for now. Okay, free cash flow, guys. The free cash flow the last five and ten years has been between nine and ten percent. This is what I like about the company: the free cash flow is higher than the net income. And that's a great thing to discuss in our community about why that's a good thing. Mo, what'd you put in? So I put 9, 10, and 11% there. So I'm going to change mine. I put 8, 8.75, and 9.5. And mm -hmm. I'm going to do 9, 10, and 11. Okay. All right, guys. So Mo, the PE and price of free cash flow at the end of our analysis. The current PE is 15. The current price of free cash flow is 5. Mo, what are the... This is, the decli this is not a declining business, but no. not a fast-growing business. Right. So what do you put in here? I did 12, 14, and 16. So, and I kind of left 16 on the high end. It's just like your market average. This one's very tough for me. You know, I did 9, 12, and 15. I can see why you went 9 and 12. So maybe I'll do 10, 12, and 14. And the reason being is I like 12, but yeah. Now for desired annual return, guys, I'm going to do two different methods here. We're going to start with what is the company worth today? And I think that's basically a 10% return based on all of my assumptions because you can get 10%. This involves zero margin of safety from the desired return perspective. Okay. Now, I want you to stick with us for a minute after we do our analysis because I'm then going to put in my margin of safety here. Let's start with what we think it's worth. Okay. 
I hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 76. Wow. All green. Low price of 60 to 100, high price of 112 to 205, middle price of 82 to 150. At these current prices, look at these returns, 16, 22, and 27%. Now, putting my margin of safety in, I'm going to put in 12, 14, and 16, because as I made higher assumptions, I want more return. It's still on the discounted cash flow perspective, yeah, all green. Sure is for me too. 96 to 140 with 117 in the middle. Mo, what'd you get? So when I put in my 11 and 13 and 15% desired annual return, I have 43 to 110 on the low end, 69 to 138 on the high end, 56 to 125 in the middle. I mean, guys. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, guys. So remember, again, this changes the way in which you look at money and investing. Everythingmoney.com, free seven-day trial. Go sign up now.